Q equals MC delta T or calculations involving heat. So the symbol for heat is Q and M is mass in grams. C is the specific heat of a substance, so how much energy it takes to raise that substance by one degree Celsius. And delta T is the change in temperature. And so the change in temperature, because uh, the change in temperature for delta for degrees Celsius or Kelvin is the same, uh, you don't actually have to worry about units for that one. Uh, so a change in 12 degrees Celsius is also a change in 12 Kelvin in the problem you'll soon see. And we have heat change per mole. Uh, so the delta H really with a, with a zero there uh, at standard conditions uh, is divided by the number of moles. And so we're moving on. So how do we do these experiments? We will try and re prevent heat from going in or out of the system by using insulating materials. Uh, the mixer here is to make sure it's even within the reaction. And this is the temperature readings that we take here. So what we normally do is we normally use water because it's a chemical reaction. And so we make the volume of the water equal to one gram. That's our basic assumption. So the IB likes to ask you the errors in these things. They love to put a one or two mark question at the end of a, a process question. The biggest thing is that heat is lost from the surroundings. It's almost impossible to stop heat being lost. The other thing is uh, when the temperature gets really high, uh, the rate of loss is actually a lot, lot quicker as well. So that's the heating curve for water. Uh, so we'll have a look at the graph in a second. You can also go for the precision of the thermometer, not, a, not the greatest one. These ones are probably a lot better. So have a careful look and see if gas is, is evolved. So gas will be leaving the system, so that'll be hot gas. And have a look to see if there are other sorts of interfering ways in which heat can come in or come out of the system. So this graph shows you a typical reaction where it heats up. It could be in the reverse for cooling, and so you do the same thing in reverse for one that gets colder. What you can see is as the reaction progresses, it's actually losing heat as well. And as I mentioned before, the hotter it gets, the quicker it actually loses heat. So, uh, so say if that was 100 degrees and that's your cup of coffee, uh, quickly goes down to something like 80 or, or, and then it's quite slow to get to the final down to 30 degrees or whatever it is if it's a summer's day. And so what you have here is a continual cooling. So you need to do your line of best fit here. And these questions do come up. I've seen quite a few of them in the test. Uh, and it's definitely needed if you're doing your IA, your experiment. So the reaction actually started here. I also see lots of students don't wait. Always wait. Um, Waiting gets a background reading. I even wait when I do these uh, videos. I wait for the, if in case I want to decrease the background sound, I have a waiting period. So you need to wait for your pH or your temperature to make sure it's stable. Uh, that's sort of like a negative control as well if you're doing biology. And so what you do here is you make sure there's nothing happening when there shouldn't be anything happening. Uh, and that also tells you that you can tell uh, so if something's going up or down when nothing should be happening, there's obviously an issue going on. Uh, and so that's when the reaction actually started. So all of this cooling time is over here and there's a massive difference in what the real temperature is. You might write this, but that is actually the real temperature. So the temperature difference is actually this part here and not what a lot of people say, which is this part here. So make sure you know how to work out temperature correctly. And so just going through some more other basic calculations here. So the heat uh, is given to you here. So this question is uh, when this amount of heat is evolved, uh, how much energy is released by this amount of mass? Uh, and so you've got the two and the one. So what you have here is this is the delta H of the reaction. And they're always, uh, that's the molar heat of the actual reaction, but it's not the molar heat of magnesium because there's two moles. So that's the big trick here. So you have to divide it by two and minus 600 kilojoules per mole is the molar heat of combustion of magnesium, but it's not the molar heat of the actual reaction because you need two magnesiums to get the balanced reaction to work through once. Uh, and so that's probably the biggest trick. Uh, have a look at the labeling. Always do a balanced, a balanced equation before you start. 
always do the formula substitute units and label don't just do this the formula label the formula uh, and so mass divided by molar mass that's the amount of moles that's used and so we divide the amount of heat uh, we times sorry we times the amount of the molar heat of combustion of magnesium by the number of moles so that is the heat released by 0.6 grams of magnesium second question now so there's 20 mils of a base and 30 mils of an acid uh, the temperature increases by 12 so that can be 12k as well I determine the amount of heat released the q all right so that the biggest trick in this one is you've got to remember when you add one thing to the other uh, sometimes they like to say well you added it to some other volume as well just to really try and make sure they've tricked you up uh, so we're looking at 50 grams here uh, always state your assumptions and so formula substitute units um, so there's the formula there q is, M, q is m cat mc delta t we've already ticked off the 50 your data booklet has the 4.18 and it's 12 so times those out and you get 2.51 kilojoules